This is Movie Night on the Most TV. I'm Ebenenim. I welcome you to our third episode of Movie Night. We are grateful to you that you have been following us all this while. I'm still here with Pastor Philip Meji. He's doing the third one with us. And he'll be coming to do the fourth one with us. Then we'll, we'll finish with him um, for the meantime. I'm glad that you have joined us online. If you have joined us, <coughs> indeed, I want you to keep sharing this video, like it, leave a comment. I have always been saying that I would want to know how much this program is blessing you. So the comments are very important to me. The sharing too is very important to us and liking of, of, of the program is also important to us. You may not have the chance to be preaching, but you have the chance to share this word to the world and God is going to bless you. Today, we are going to be looking at the parable of the sower and we'll be going to watch the video. So enjoy the video. Behold, the sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because they seeing, see not. And hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing ye he shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted. And I should heal them. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. 
He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Welcome back. So Jesus had been talking about the parable of the sower. And because Jesus had already explained the parable of the sower, I will not read from the verse, the verse 1, if you like. But I want to go straight to read for emphasis uh, the verse from the verse 18 of Matthew chapter 13. Okay. So that our pastor <coughs> will, will just go into the discussions with us. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 18. Jesus says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Mm. And so emphatically, we are, we, I want us to expound verse to verse. Verse to verse. So, man of God, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for joining us again. Thank you. Once again, I want to greet our cherished viewers. And uh, thanks for coming online to watch us. Thank you, man of God. So, I, I want us to quickly look at the verse 19. Okay. So, uh, man of God, we know that <coughs> Jesus has been talking about hearts, right? Mm -hmm. He's been talking about hearts. So he talks yeah. about about four different soils. Mm. Can you can you uh, introduce us to what Jesus was trying to do? Okay. So um, when we look closely at this particular parable, our Lord Jesus was talking about the heart of man okay. and how it receives the word of God. Okay. So the different soils our Lord was given were the different types of hearts we have. Okay. Yeah, so man of God, sometimes you see all of us in the church, but we all don't have the same heart. Okay. Some of us, our hearts are very hard like rocks. Okay. Some, their hearts are soft. Some of our hearts are like the, the, the roadside. Okay. Some of our hearts are like uh, the soil with the, the thorns on it, yes. So this parable, specifically the Lord Jesus was trying to talk about the heart of man okay. and how receptive it is to the word of God. Wow. Yes. So uh, looking at the verse 19, before we even go to the other verses, I want us okay. to expound it deeply. Okay. He says that anyone who does not, who hears the word. So it is one thing to hear the word mm. and another to actually understand the word. Mm. So that anybody who hears the word and do not understand, it's like the one, uh, it's like uh, the one who has the heart of Mm. Of, of the wayside. Mm. Uh, why would anyone not understand the word of God? Why? Okay. So, thank you very much, word of God. Now, verse 13 says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom mm. and uh, understandeth it not. So, the underlying word is understanding the word. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we go to church and the word the man of God is speaking to us, we do not really get the word. Okay? We don't really understand I know that some people, so we go to church because of the music. Okay. So we are going to really dance. Mm. So sometimes when a preacher is preaching, we say, oh, he should hurry up, hurry up, so that we get to the dancing side. Yeah, so when that happens, it means that we have received the word all right, but we don't really understand the word. Okay. So there is no, it is not deeply rooted in our hearts. Okay. It is just lying down. Mm. Now with those people with that kind of heart, the following day where you ask them, what did the pastor preach yesterday? He doesn't even remember. Okay. He will just tell that, oh, when I went to church, the music was good. The pastor preached very well. Mm -hmm. But when you ask, what did the pastor preach? He can't even remember the scripture. Because he, when he received the word, 
Mm. Number one, he didn't understand the word. Okay. So the word was just lying on the surface of his heart. And then the enemy came to pick it away. So it was not deeply rooted in his heart. Yes. So it means that he didn't understand the word. Very well. So um, understanding the word of God is key. It's key. It's key. Spend time one uh, doesn't understand the word. Yes, and the person has left himself open. That is what the Bible says that the verse 9 specifically says that then come the wicked one. Mm. So if you don't understand the word according to what you have just told us, yeah. then the enemy comes in to actually what? Take to take it away from you. Now I want to ask you, what would help one to understand the word of God? Because we okay. know that the word of God is not just any word, mm. but it's spirit, right? Mm. So how do one understand a word which is spirit? Wow. Thank you very much, word of God. Now, the word of God, Bible says that God has exalted his word okay. above his name. So when you have the word of God and you understand it very well, okay. that word is able to do a lot of things for you. Okay. Because we believe in the name of Jesus, when you mention it, miracles happen. But God has exalted the word too, very well. So you can use the word, it is written, it is written, it is written to direct your life. So man of God, you were asking, how can we understand the word? And that will take us to the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 coming. It says that meditate on the way day and night. Okay. So I went to church today and I was, I was, we were preached about the redemption of Christ. I have to meditate on it. Bible says the Greek people, when they hear the word and they go home, they go and research into it. Okay. So you take that scripture, you recite it, you think about it. And by thinking about it, the Holy Spirit himself will open up the word for you, okay. for you to be able to understand it. Okay. So one easy way of understanding the word of God is okay. by meditating. Meditating. Meditating on it, yes. So the, the man of God is explaining the, the first verse, which is the verse 19. Um, to them who hear the word of God, but do not understand. Mm. It's a serious issue. The man of God says that one of the ways that you can understand the word of God is by meditation. So he quoted a scripture, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, where the Bible says that we should meditate on, on the law of the Lord mm. day and night. Day and night. So that we should live by the word. So the man of God is telling us simply that for you to understand the word, you must actually meditate on the word. Yeah. Think about the word. And as he said, while you are thinking about the word, the Holy Spirit will give you deeper knowledge mm. about what the word of God actually means. You are watching Movie Night on Demos TV. If you have just joined me, I'm here with Pastor Philip Meji. Share this video to be a blessing to your world. Like the, 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 the show and also leave a comment, and we'll be reading all your comments. Man of God, I want us to, to continue, but I don't know. Uh, I want us to actually lay more emphasis on the issue of understanding. Okay. Because I have met a lot of people. We have people today who actually misinterpret the scriptures. Mm. They could just take a scripture and explain it how it suits them. Somebody reads a, you read a, somebody reads a scripture or quotes a scripture. Yeah. And you ask the person to explain the scripture, and the person is unable to explain the scripture. Mm. Why do people misinterpret scriptures? Is it because they don't understand, or it is deliberate to suit them mm. at a particular time for a reason? Okay. So, man of God, I will say you are correct in both the two instances. Yeah. Now, uh, when we read the word of God, we, we don't have to just read, we have to study it. Okay. So just as our students will spend time hours studying their textbooks, mm -hmm. we have to spend time studying the Word of God. Okay. Now, by spending time studying the Word of God, there is a spirit behind the letters. Okay. So behind what you are seeing written in the Bible, there's a spirit behind it. Okay. And as you are studying and meditating on it, that spirit, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Spirit, is going to link up with you and it's going to give you clear understanding mm -hmm of what you are reading. Okay. The second instance is, there are a lot of men of God who will twist the word, manipulate the word to do what, to suit what they want. So there are some people, excuse me to use, in the area of finances. Okay. When they really need finances, okay. they are going to manipulate the word in a certain way to put fear in the congregation so that they will bring the money. Okay. Yes, and with, that is not the best way the Lord has taught us to do. 
that the Lord has taught us in a way that the Holy Ghost is the one who will open up the way to you. So he said that the spirit of truth, whom the world does not know, but you know him because he lives in you and abides with you. He will teach you all things that I've said unto you. So the Holy Spirit is the best person to open up the Bible for us. Now, when people are manipulating the scriptures for their selfish gains, the Holy Ghost will prompt you on that okay. so that you will not become a victim. Because, man of God, I know people who have lost their cars, their houses, some have even lost their jobs because, excuse me to use the word, some men of God duped them. Because they themselves did not spend time to study the word of God for themselves. Okay. Yes. So the Holy Ghost is the best person to do what? To open up the scriptures to you. After you have read it, seek the counsel of the Holy Ghost and it's going to open them up to you. Don't lose your car. <laughs> and don't lose your house. Don't lose your wife. <laughs> and don't lose your husband. Don't lose anything. Because a certain man of God has turned the word of God upside down mm. to favor him. The man of God is saying that, that it's, it's time for us to study the, the word by ourselves. ourselves. You don't have, have to be an academic to understand, to understand the word of God. You don't, you don't have, have to be anything, anything to understand the word of God. All, All you need is the help, help of, of the Holy Spirit. He is, he is our, our helper. Help. Study the, the word of God. God. And, and you, you will understand, understand the, the word, word of God. And, and no certain man of God will do you so that, so that you lose your house, lose your, 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 your heart in money, or any of the possessions. possessions. Thank, Thank you, you very much, man of God. God. And, and I want us to, to, I want to ask the flower question quickly before you escape. Is this a sin against, against the Holy Spirit, Spirit mm. to twist or to misinterpret the word of God? Is yes. it a sin? Yes. Uh, man of God, it's, it's a sin against God when you twist the word of God. So when you read the book of Revelations, I think the last chapter come in, it says that whoever adds to it, uh, whoever adds to what the Lord has said for their personal gain is going to be uh, judged by that. So you are going to be punished for that. And whoever also deliberately took some out to seek their personal gain will also be punished for that. Now, the one who wrote the word knows what he has written down. So when you begin to manipulate the word, you begin to add something for your selfish gain, he's watching you. He has employed you as a steward. At the end, you will account to him. And whatever you have said that you are not supposed to say, you have to account for it. Because it said that every word, either word that will come out of our mouth, we have to account for it. And it said in speaking to his children about his word, he even said when we get to the destination, it is the Holy Spirit who will speak through us. So as a man of God, you should prepare in your mind, in your carnal mind, that I'm going to use this word for my favor. No, you have to ask the Holy Spirit first. What food should I give to the ship today? What is the best word for the ship today in the service? Because when you yield to the Holy Ghost, he knows the problems the people are coming with. So the Holy Ghost will say, preach about this. Speak about this scripture. Because the people are coming, they are hungry for that particular word. But when you go with your intention to use the word in your favor, remember that at the end you are going to account for it. So you must yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit when it comes to giving the word to the saints. What about those who do that out of ignorance? Maybe they don't know how to speak the real interpretation. Okay. But, but they think that what they are interpreting is the right thing. Maybe ignorance. Would God go them to so, so we could just give them advice, advice, right? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> interesting. That, that's why at the beginning, uh, when you look at what Apostle Paul said to the churches, he said, what? Steady to show yourself approved. As a, a, a work man of God who is not going to be ashamed in his work, okay? So whenever you are called to share the word of God, the Bible admonishes us to rightly divide the word of truth. So it is your responsibility to study the word and ask the Holy Ghost to lead you to divide it rightly. Because one of God, people have used the word of God to lead people astray. There are some churches that I, 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 I saw a church in South Africa 
that the word of God said, the Lord said, they should eat the grass because they are the sheep. Wow. Yes, they are the sheep, so they should eat the grass. And we will see the church in the true grass. God is just written in the Bible that they are the sheep. So the power of the shepherd. So the power is. Anything the shepherd says, they do. So the man of God has taken the word all right, as the, the church members being the sheep, but he has twisted it. And these people are eating grass in the church. Now this man of God is going to be accountable for what he has done. I know there's a man of God that had, had led. There was one man of God I read about. He told the people that Jesus is coming right now. So all the church members should sell their properties, come to the church. They came to the church, they locked up the church, they drank poison, and they all died. Because they want to make it to heaven first. <laughs> they want to go to heaven first before everybody comes. So a lot of people are misinterpreting the Bible out of ignorance. Some of these people truly, they don't know. But they are going to be accountable for it. So as a man of God, you must study the word of God. As a workman who is approved in his work, who does, does not need to be ashamed. Yes. Please, Please make, make sure you don't chew grass. <laughs> and make sure you don't, you don't poison yourself, yourself because the certain man of God says that Jesus is coming now, 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 now. Make, make sure, sure you take the Bible. I am, I am glad, glad to tell you that, that it is one thing hearing the word of God and another thing understanding the word of God. Understanding the word of God is key. Very, very important. Man of God, can we admit or agree that understanding the word of God helps one to go. Yes. Exactly. Because when you begin to understand the word of God, you are knowing God. In the book of John chapter 1, verse 1, kind of, Jesus said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word we are talking about is God. So the more you understand the word of God, the more you understand the ways of God. And when you understand the ways of God, even though you may be going through difficulty now, you know that your God does his things according to time. So in due time, God will work in your favor also. So the best way to understand God is by first studying the word of God. And understanding the word Steady of God. The word of God is its basic yeah. to understanding the word of God. We are moving to the verse 20. And it says that, But ye that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy received it. 21. Yet had he not root himself in himself, sorry, but dure it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, mm. by because of the word, by by and by he is offended. Mm. Mm. He is offended. Man of God. The stony, um, if you like, the stony places yeah. is also another heart. Evangelism leaders who stop evangelizing because of offense. Okay. Because once you come to do the work of God, you will be offended. So you go to a time, Jesus, John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus that, are you sure you are the one who is going to come? Man of God, remember that it was this same John the Baptist who said at Jordan, that the son of man is coming and I cannot even untie his yeah. shoes. But when John was arrested because of the gospel, he sent that Jesus should be asked that, is he, the, is he sure he's the yeah. Messiah? Because now uh, persecution has worked. Yes, of course. Persecution has come in. So as a child of God, you will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. But remember that you should not be what offended. Jesus sent a reply to John. So tell John that the blind are seeing. The lame are walking. Mm. The deaf and dumb are hearing and speaking. Okay. Blessed is the man who is not offended because of me. Jesus said, blessed is the man who is not offended because of me. So it is our, our responsibility as children of God to guard our heart against offense. Okay. Because offense will come, but do not be what? 
offended. Mm. And also make sure that you follow your stony heart okay. so that the word of God can be rooted inside you. Mm. The word of God can penetrate inside you. And when the word penetrates and becomes strong in you, no matter the persecutions that will come, you will never be offended. Okay. Yes. There are some people when they, because someone say, oh, you, you do something too much. Mm. You are too low too much. Then they become offended. Okay. Oh, I will not sing again. Okay. That church have even stopped mm. it. Okay. No, you should not be offended. You so, so be offended. I want us to lay emphasis on this word. It, say, it says that yet has he not root in himself. Mm. So mm. the word of God, how does the word of God get down into people? How, yeah. how does that happen? Yeah. So the, the word of God gets down into people through what I said earlier on, through meditation. Okay. And obedience, okay. you must obey the word. Yield yourself to obey the word. Man of God, the Lord once told the prophet to tell a king to go and dip himself in the Jordan seven times. And then the, the, the king said, in all this Samaria, is there not any nice river than Jordan? Okay, so the word at that time to his situation was not making sense to him. Okay. But he had to obey it. Okay. Beloved, no matter how the word becomes difficult to us in our situation, let us obey the word because the word has the power and the potential to solve our problems. And after obeying the word, for the word to be able to break our stony heart, for the roots to penetrate, we must meditate. Because today you read a word, it is not making sense to you, but as you are meditating daily, today you have meditated, tomorrow you are meditating, on the third day, on the seventh day, you will see that that same word you read on Monday is giving you a different meaning on Friday. Okay. By then, it is telling you that the word has started breaking ground. Mm. Mm. The word has started penetrating through your heart. So we can meditate on it and we should obey the word. So we, we, we should allow the word of God to have root or to be deep, deeply rooted in, in, in our hearts. The man of God says that we are in a world of many challenges yeah. and many tribulations. But the Bible says that the Lord will save or deliver them, deliver him from them all. Oh, yes. And it is by this same word that we are delivered from persecution and from all forms of afflictions and all forms of troubles. This is the only word you need. Yeah. But you must allow the word of God to sit in you. Yes, no matter how difficult your heart is, maybe you are having the heart of a stony place. Mm. Maybe a stony place is the kind of heart you are having. But the man of God is telling us here today that the word of God has the power to break that That's ground. Right. Right. You must only allow yourself for the word of God to work on you. So this is it for, for, for the stony places. Don't get angry and leave the singing group. <laughs> Don't get too offended and leave the church. Don't get too offended and leave your wife. Don't mm. get too offended and leave your husband. Don't get too offended and stop doing that good thing you are doing. Any time you get offended, remember the word of God and you'll be delivered. We are moving to the verse 20, 23. Okay. No, we are moving to the, to the 22 instead. The 22. It says that he also that received Seed among thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches mm. choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Mm. One of God, mm. people hear the word of God, yeah, but they are swayed by riches. Yeah. People think they are rich, people think they have fame, people think they have power. So they don't really value word the word of God. God. And because they have actually put their trust and everything into these worldly things, it takes the place of the word mm. in them. What, what do you have to say about this? Such people, they can easily be offended. They can easily be offended. Okay, so, so man of God, then verse 22, uh, it says that, He also that received seed among the tongues, is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word 
and he becoming unfruitful. So today we are people who are rich. People have power, people have fame. People have money if you like. People have everything they want, they need in this life. And so those things that they actually have have taken the place of the word. They hear the word all right, but these things choke the word. What do you have to say to say about this? this? Okay, so, man of God, at the beginning we said our Lord Jesus was referring to the gospel and how the human heart receives the gospel. And he gave the types of heart. But surprisingly, this particular type of heart, we have a lot of them in the church. Okay. Yes, that they receive the word with all of their heart with joy, but the cares of this world, the cares of this world will choke it. Okay. But there was a lady in my prayer fellowship, I've been praying with this lady for a long time, and then she came to tell me one day, I'm out of God. Almost all my friends are having cars now. Okay. And I asked her, oh, God will do it for you, your time will. I told her, your time will come, the Lord will do it for you. She said, no, but they've been laughing at her. I told them, that how did she, I asked her, how did they get their cars? Mm -hmm. Then she said, this one has sugar daddy this, sugar daddy that, minister this. And some of these ladies are also active in the church. Okay. But because of the cares of this world, materialistic things, they are deviated from the word. Okay. I only told this lady that have faith in God. For in due time, the Lord will give you your own car without sugar daddies. And by God's grace, now she's also driving. Okay. And she didn't get it through sugar daddies. Wow. So it means that by being faithful to God, the Lord can give you whatever you want. Wow. But these people have a heart that love the word of God. Mm. But the cares of this world. Mm. Sometimes friends are pressurizing you. Sometimes even you yourself, you are having challenges. You must pay your school fees. You must take care of yourself. You need money to survive. And this money is not coming as you wanted it. So the devil is tempting you by joining the wrong company. And it's very difficult for you. But one thing the Lord said is that the Lord said these people's heart does not have a well-rooted seed. Okay. So because the word is also shallow on their heart, mm. the cares of this world can come okay. and it will sway them off. Mm. There was a time Jesus said the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Beloved, when the word is rooted deeply in your heart, you will go through all these challenges and obstacles, but you will still survive it. You will still survive waiting for the timing of God. There are a lot of people in the church who we go to church to receive the word of God, but we are also like the world. So you see us in the church, you see us in the night clubs. You see us in the church, you see us without corruption, doing corruption in our workplaces okay. for those contracts and all of that, just like the world. You see us in the church, you see us lying because we want to lie to get whatever we want. Bible said they are they, those who are like the, the, the seed that was sown in the thorns. Okay. That when the word begins to grow, the curse of this world okay. begins to choke them up. But if your heart is like that, there is still hope for you. The Lord is able to work on your heart to become like the fetal soil. So I want to encourage you, wow. do not let the cares of this world sway you from the way. Just hold on fast to the Lord and you will do it. A man of God, he says, he says um, the final part of this, even the, the 22, I mean. He says, and he becometh unfruitful. Hmm. What is it to become unfruitful? Yeah. Yeah, so when the word, uh, when the seed is choked, you definitely become unfruitful. Okay. That is, you are not able to bear fruit of the word. Okay. And you are not able to multiply. Okay. Because any word of God that comes to you comes as a seed. Mm. And the word must grow in you and bear fruit and multiply. So when we take, there's this uh, proverb our old people give. They say when you take a palm, I know, a, a plantain tree, with time you begin to see other small, small plantains growing around the mother tree okay? okay now when you give your life to jesus and you are saved with time we should see people around you getting saved okay so if the seed is choked and does not bear fruit you have deprived those people around you of their salvation so that is what it means by you are not bearing fruit mm -hmm. the seed is not producing any tangible fruit in your life so when you realize that you have been a christian for a long time and you are not bearing fruit check the kind of heart you have whether is it a rocky mm. is it a stony heart okay. or is it a seed that was sown in tongues in tongues yeah. 
Thank you very much. You are watching Movie Night on the Most TV. We are still with Pastor Philip. He has been explaining the parable of the sower. And we are at our final part, which is the verse 24 of Matthew chapter 13. Verse 24 of Matthew chapter 13. Man of God, um, this part, 23, sorry, 23, verse 23. It says, But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understanding it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So this okay. is the kind of heart yeah. that brings salvation to a person. So, so, so this is kind of heart that actually brings fruit. Yeah. Is this the kind of heart that God is looking for? Yes, exactly. So this is the perfect type of heart that our Lord Jesus is looking for. And beloved, there is a secret here. When you realize this particular heart, it is still facing the challenges all those hearts have faced. Okay. So it is still facing the cares of this world. Mm. It is still facing offense. It is still facing all the difficulties the various hearts faced. Okay. But for this particular heart, it permitted the seed to gain roots oh. in it. It's permitted the seed to grow and gain roots in it. So it is able to withstand any challenge that comes. So Jesus didn't necessarily say that because that heart is not having challenges. No. It is facing the offense. It is facing the cares of this world. It is facing the persecutions. But because the seed has been rooted, okay. it is able to withstand all of them. Okay. And it is able to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord made reference of 30, 60, 100 going. This shows that, as the Lord said, to whom much is given, much will be required. And the one who is faithful in little, more will be given to him. So, if the word comes to you in your little situation, your small circumstance, and the Lord has seen that you are very faithful with it to multiply, it begins to entrust you with more. It begins to give you the grace to multiply. So, you realize that. You have been you have been able to win two souls to the Lord today, but another time the Lord has entrusted ten souls to you. Another time you are ministering somewhere and fifty souls have gathered. Another time you are ministering, hundred souls are gathered. It means that you are bearing fruit with the little you have. Therefore, the Lord is entrusting you with the grace to bear more fruits. Thank you very much. So this is the end of movie night today on the Most TV. We thank you so much for joining us. Please leave a comment, like the video, and share this video. Our pastor will be giving us the final words. And we'll go to the curtains on today's episode. Also, just finish with us and pray with us finally. So, our beloved viewers, my final words to you is that the parable was talking about the gospel of Jesus and the hearts of men. Now, when you read the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says that the word of God is quick and sharper, like a two-edged sharp sword, which is able to pierce the division of the soul and the spirit. Meaning that no matter how hard your heart is, the word of God is able to penetrate through to gain root. The only thing you have to do is to allow the word, to give the word the permission to nurture your heart to become a fertile soil. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time, but you do not find yourself in the category of the good soil. I want to pray with you. We are trusting the Holy Spirit to nurture the, our hearts, that is the soil of our hearts, for it to become the good soil. Maybe you also don't know the Lord Jesus at all. I want to give you the opportunity to receive Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. You can pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you today for your word. I have heard your word. I believe it. I believe you died on the cross of Calvary for my salvation. Lord, I welcome you into my heart. Be the Lord and personal Savior of my heart. Let the Holy Spirit take charge over my life as I follow your leading. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, maybe you have also been a Christian for a long time and you are trusting God to nurture your heart to be like the good soil. Let us pray. Father, we commit all our viewers into your hands. You know the nature of their hearts and what they are going through. We ask the Holy Spirit to move through their hearts 
to nurture every ground, to produce light where there is darkness, to soften every rocky ground. As they receive your word, may your word begin to grow. May it gain root in their hearts so that they will not be offended, so that in the days of persecution, they will still be able to stand and bear fruits to multiply in your kingdom. This is what we ask in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. We will we, we'll need you to support our programs. I would personally need you to support Movie Night and Demos TV. Support the work of the ministry. If, if you are interested, interested to support, support this ministry. ministry. We, we have, have this, this Momo number. number. You, you can send your, your seat through it, it and God, God is going to bless you. So, so this, this, are, this is the number. Zero five five four five 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 three nine seven. I read it. Zero five five four five 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 three nine seven. God bless you for joining us on the most TV for movie night. See you again next week. Stay blessed. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. Everybody say, I'll be